Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So today I'm just getting ready. It is actually Christmas day and I decided to do a different look for me. Bold red lip. I absolutely love how this looks. Using some new makeup, some stuff that's been in my collection, kind of a shop my stash. Y'all know how these go, but it is a chatty get ready with me about life updates, um, surgeries, <laughs> Big life changes. So not a tutorial, just chatting like I'm sitting down talking to my friends, talking to y'all. So before we get into this video, if you're new, I hope you decide to join the family by hitting that subscribe button and turning on your notification bell so you know every time I upload. I do a lot of hair, a lot of makeup, a lot of nails, lots of shopping. We all know that is my favorite thing to do. So if you're into that, I sprinkle in a little fitness as well. Everything related to beauty is on this channel. I won't keep you waiting if you want to see how I got this look, my little Christmas glam 2023, then stay tuned and keep on watching. All right, so we're going to jump straight into this video. I'm not doing tutorial per se. I'm really just gonna talk to you guys do some life updates today is actually christmas day and i am five days post-surgery <laughs> so if i look a little beat up maybe might just be tired or hell you know what no i look good that's how we're gonna go into the new year no more negative talk no more making excuses it is what it is so yeah, I am five days post-surgery. I am not sure how much I've talked about this on my YouTube channel, but I have had the biggest struggle with fibroids and I've had the biggest issue with fibroids and like female problems for a really long time now. My fibroids were diagnosed in 2017, I believe, right after I moved to Houston. I've been trying to get a hysterectomy since 2017, 2018. And apparently you have to jump through all these hoops to be able to do what you feel is best for your body. So the doctor that I had at the time, I'm using, um, I'll try to remember to tell you what I'm using. The Huda Beauty Glowish Blur Jam. I feel like I have not used this on camera, so... I'm pulling stuff out of my collection and just using stuff I haven't used or stuff that I need to remember, kind of like a shop mustache. Um, but yeah, at the time, my doctor decided that I was still too young at the age of 36, I believe. Keep in mind, I do have an older son. My son will be 24 next year and I have grandbabies like... I'm not having any more kids. I don't want any more kids. I knew that. I knew that. So I did not understand what the problem was and why she would not let me, let me have my hysterectomy. But so I suffered and horrible periods, hor horrible cramps. Just if you know, you know, if you've had endometriosis or just any other problems related to female anatomy you know it literally ruins your life for s several weeks out of the month um my cycles were pretty regular but in terms of pain and heaviness of the flow that was irregular so some months i would be fine other months it would not even start but i would have all the symptoms like Long story short, it needed to go. Needless to say, I struggled a lot with that and could not get this doctor to agree to do my hysterectomy. And then after I had my knee surgeries or around the same time, I asked her again then, like, can I do it then? Because I'm already going to be down, not able to train. So I would rather be down for everything all at the same time. She said no. So lo and behold, after I have my knee surgeries and I come back from my knee surgeries and am feeling stronger and feeling good, oh, now she's concerned and she wants to do my hysterectomy. Well, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm back to training. 
I feel healthy-ish, you know, like it's manageable. I do know that I have a pretty high pain tolerance. So there were some months where the pain would be bad, but other months where it was just more the inconvenience of having to deal with the symptoms, lower back pain, fatigue, cramps, um, the bloating, all of those things. So I told her no, because I was not ready to do it then because I was getting stronger. Um, so then fast forward to this year, still dealing with it. I'm in Georgia and I, I think I'm going to do my eyes last, mainly because I'm not sure how deep this eye look is going to be. I said light, but we know me. Um, concealer, I'm using the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Concealer in the shade 33 Medium Rosy. I hope this is deep enough. If not, I'm just going to mix something else with it. Yeah, so fast forward to this year, I tore... I had a partial tear in one of the tendons in my rotator cuff and it is it finally snapped <laughs> i've been having that partial tear since 2018 and i'm just hard-headed and i didn't want to have surgery um it finally snapped in january and i decided because i already had goals for this year for competitions that i wanted to do that i was just going to do my best to make it through the rest of the year and compete with the tear and then go into have surgery at the end of the year and start the next year rehabbing and come back stronger like I did last time. Finally found a new doctor and told her about my issues with my fibroids and how much I've been struggling. And initially she did push back a little bit saying, you know, her preference is always to try to keep her patients with all of their organs. And I made it very clear that I don't care what her preference is. <laughs> that was not mine. So she was like, okay, well, then that's that. You've suffered long enough, got your medical history. I see this has been an issue. So you wanna take it out? Let's take it out. And I was just like, finally, somebody who gets it. So I'm using the Milk Makeup. I feel like I used this already. I don't know if I have another powder, this is fine. Um, their translucent blurring powder. This is translucent medium. So I was really happy that she did not give me any kind of crap about it. I should probably pin this hair. And if y'all are wondering, this is a sew-in by the way. Um, I decided to try this because with the surgery, it will be, I'm having another surgery, we'll get there. But the second surgery that I'm having, I will not be able to use my right arm for a while. The repair of my rotator cuff tendon like it will be immobilized for I think like three weeks or something I don't know it's low-key making me panic and I'm trying not to think about it but yeah so Tuesday today is Sunday Tuesday I had my hysterectomy and I was really anxious because the doctor told me that there were two types of procedures one is a laparoscopic which means there are small incisions on the lower abdomen and then one in the belly button and then one inside um, where she would go in with tools, separate the organ and then go in and pull out the uterus. Sorry if that's too graphic. For foundation, I'm going to use the NYX Blur. Bear with me in 18 Nutmeg. I don't remember if I've used this or if I just swatched it. Yeah, so the problem with that was because I had a C-section when I had my son, she said that the scar tissue that probably developed from my C-section scar would make it hard for her to be able to go in and take my uterus out. And so if that was the case, she would have to do another C-section scar, which would be the full five inch incision on my lower stomach. And if you've had a C-section or any abdominal surgery, the first thing you know about it, it is really hard to recover from because you use your abs for everything. Also too, with the incision being that big and the surgery being as big as it is, I would not be able to work out at all for six weeks, which that's, that's a little tough. 
I, I don't know the last time I've gone that long not working out just because I've always been in prep. Like for 11 years, this has been my thing. This foundation matches me really well right now in terms of my normal shade, but we all know I like my foundation to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to mix in some of this Maybelline Superstay Skin Tint. And I got mine in the shade 355. It just wasn't sitting with me well because she was talking about how much worse the recovery was going to be for it. And I was just like, I don't want to deal with any of this. But I feel like I knew the surgery was going to be worth it, right? So it was just like me needing to decide the lesser of the two evils, get it done, and then start the road back to recovery and being stronger. So yeah, the problem was also that she literally told me she would not know what surgery she had to do until she got in there and started cutting. <laughs> Talk about anxiety, like you can't even prepare yourself, right? Because in my mind, and I kept telling everybody like, I'm gonna be fine, she's gonna do the small incisions and I'm gonna be fine, like that's just, in my head, that's what I think, that's what I want to happen, so that's what we're gonna believe. But the reality of it was, I would wake up and have to see what's called, what incisions I had. Um, so yeah, morning of surgery, I go in. The doctor felt pretty confident that she would be able to do the small ones, but she wasn't sure. For reference, your uterus is about the size of this. The fibroid that I had, was the exact same size as my uterus on the inside. So she said my uterus was enlarged to about these fingers. Yeah, so morning of surgery, go in. Surgery took about three hours. Literally, I woke up and the first words out my mouth were, did she have to do the big cut? And the nurse said, no, you have small incisions. Y'all, I busted out crying. Like literally, I just started doing this and I was like, oh my God, thank you. And she was like, are you hot? And I was like, no, I'm happy. So that was a huge relief. Like I had surgery. I was in my room by six o'clock and by 11 o'clock that night, I got up by myself and I went to the bathroom and then... At four o'clock, I got up by myself and went to the bathroom again, um, told the nurse, look, I gotta go. I don't need y'all to come in here every time. Yes, I am a little bit bossy, go figure. And then by seven o'clock that morning, they were like, do you wanna go walk around? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? So I start walking the hall and the nurse is like, "Uh, you've been walking for a while now. I said, yeah, I'm on lap three of the floor. And she said, well, if you do 10, that's a mile. Say less, boom. <laughs> I love having a goal. So I walked a mile the next morning of my surgery, not even 24 hours after. Um, so I went home the day after. She kept me in that day basically because she said that insurance will bill you the same amount whether you stay for a day or not. She was like, so why not take advantage and have nurses on call? So stayed for a day. Um, a really good friend of mine came to the hospital with me the day of and then came back that night to bring food which i ate a big old bowl of pho oh my god it was so good and then came back the next morning to pick me up and pretty much dropped me off like she stayed for a little while to make sure i was okay but i was like i promise i'm good i was navigating the stairs in my house like i just felt like yes i was sore but not like I had just had a major surgery, you know? That is what's happened. I had some bloating. I think I did one, maybe two nights of pain pills just to make sure like actual pain pills versus Tylenol or ibuprofen, just to make sure I could sleep because I know recovery, part of that, the huge part of that is resting. And I'm really bad at that part. I don't know, I remember I did use this before. I don't know that I have. A new concealer. I probably do. It's too late. I'm going to go in with this Milk Makeup Concealer. Um, I remember using this. I think I didn't use it on camera. But I remember using it and feeling like it like... When it dried down, it looked darker. And then it looked like I didn't really have as much concealer on as I normally do. Yes, I remember that. So yeah, I do feel like... 
I got extremely lucky because my doctor told me it was a fight to get my uterus out. And she said that she, if it would have been any other doctor and she wasn't being considerate of my goals for my training, that she probably would have just stopped there and just cut me open to get my uterus out because she said she literally had to deliver a baby. She went in with forceps, pulled it out. She did say I had some tearing from it, but she said, I figured you would rather that than have a five inch major incision. So I am just so grateful that I met this woman. I literally just Googled her. Dr. Amber Glenn in Mableton, Georgia, or maybe Atlanta area. I don't know what it'll say, but Amber Glenn Highlands Medical Practice or something like that. I, I don't know what I would have done because she was just very mindful of everything that I wanted and did not push her own agenda, didn't try to tell me what she thought was better. Like she was just like, I want you to be happy. I want you to recover and I want you to get back to being able to lift weights. So completely different from the experience that I had in Houston and I cannot recommend her enough. So now I also decided to film today because I'm going to have another surgery five days from now, four days from now, next Thursday, this Thursday coming on the 28th to fix my shoulder and I don't think I'm going to be skilled enough to do a full face of glam with my left hand. So I probably should have tried today. That would have made for a fun video. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why I just have this feeling like I'm trying to be optimistic about it, but I started reading stuff about the type of surgery and the downtime and the rehab. And it just feels like it's actually going to be worse than my hysterectomy, which is absurd to me. Um, so I'm trying to just get in some filming now just to have something up and give y'all an update too. But I do have some other stuff that I've recorded already that I will share. I'll still be uploading stuff. It just may not be current. So if I look a little funky or I come on here with one arm in a sling, y'all know why. But that is it as far as my medical history stuff goes. Other than that, um, update on my lifting, I competed three times this year. I was able to place in the top three in my divisions of all three. I won this, the last one that I did. The other two I finished second. Very close second. Piss me off another story. But to say that I had a whole tear in my rotator cuff, and was able to finish second against some really strong women, like, I should be proud. I know that. My biggest accomplishment this year was I have been chasing, I've been chasing the goal, a goal to hit a certain total for a while now. I missed it last year by five pounds. Worst feeling ever when I realized that. But I knew it was gonna be out of reach this year because of my shoulder, my bench press, Competitively in my weight class, my best bench press is 265 pounds. My bench press dropped to around 230 pounds. So just that right there, pretty much like I needed that lift to be able to be in the running for the total. So I focused on my deadlift, which is my favorite lift. Pick it up from the floor, stand up, put it back down. Because I had a goal to take the record for the heaviest deadlift in the raw division, which means squatting in sleeves versus knee wraps. I had a goal to take the deadlift record, which at the time was 250 kilograms, which was like 551 pounds. I know that sounds absurd. <laughs> Weigh in the day before at 148.8 pounds. Um, and then you get to rehydrate and stuff. So my average walk around is between 162, 167, depending on, <laughs> depending on how I'm eating. Um, right now, since surgery, I've been around 162. I'm going to use this NYX Wonder Stick. This is in the shade Rich. I know these are not new, 
but I just finally decided to pick one up. So we're gonna see how these work. So yeah, people will ask me all the time, like, oh my God, how do you compete at 148? You don't look 148 when you're competing. I'm not 148 when I'm competing. The federation that I compete in and a lot of the federations, a lot of the bigger federations do 24 hour weigh-ins. So you weigh in the day before. Ooh, that's dark, but very pretty shade. Um, you weigh in the day before and then you rehydrate, get your weight back up, get all your vitamins and nutrients back in, and then you compete the next day. So for those asking, and yes, it is allowed in my federation, it is not cheating, that is what happened. So I weighed in at 148.8 on the dot. The meet I did before that, I actually weighed in too light at 100 and almost 46 pounds, which when you're cutting that much, you're literally just dehydrating yourself. And when you do that, it your muscles suffer and it's harder to put the weight back on. And sometimes it's just, it's too much to recover from. And so it really hurt me in the meet that I did in October. And I had a goal to do one more meet in December. And the goal was just to go in and like, lift the heaviest weight possible. Like, I don't even care. It's not about anything else. I just want to see like how strong I actually am if I'm not cutting and doing all that stuff. But when I missed my goal in October with all the life stress, I wasn't sleeping. My blood pressure was up. I was miserable. So miserable going in to my October meet. After that meet, I just completely had a breakdown and I come to Jesus with myself and realized like... I've dedicated my life to this competing for the last 10 going on 11 years now and it just means way too much to me to continue to sacrifice my goals chasing stuff that doesn't I don't know the word not suit me but oh what's the word I'm looking for it just it's not in line with what I, I need in my life I guess you could say so if it's not serving the purpose of the goals that I'm reaching and not in alignment and providing comfort and, you know, just it needs to match with where I'm going or I got to let it go. Um, that is pretty much what happened for me. And I made a huge decision to do that and just no looking back, no questions asked, immediately felt relief like I don't think I realized how closed off and sad and just guarded and just not myself I was until I got back from that trip and just really sat in how I was feeling and I was like I feel good like I really really feel good and that was it. That was it. Ever since then, I've just, I put my head down and I said, you got five weeks to try again. And I have the Wonder Stick also in their blush in bright amber and fuchsia. I need a powder bronzer to set this. I'm going to get that because I didn't grab one. That's kind of pink. I want a red blush. Let me find one. Okay, so bronzer, I got the House Labs bronzer in the shade Deep Level 10. This is the Power Sculpt Velvet Bronzer. I do remember swatching these, but I have not swatching it because but I haven't used it yet. And I remember swatching it in stores. Yeah, I just I can't put into words. Like I did not expect to have that much relief and sense of hopefulness. Um, motivation, um, like just, I, it's so hard to explain, but I just felt lighter. Like I immediately started sleeping better. My thoughts were clearer. Just, I can't even explain it y'all. It's like I had been in a fog and I just did not even realize how bad it was until I was out of it. So yeah, I had five weeks to get my shit together and 
keep my weight down, figure out what went wrong nutrition wise or weighing in. Ooh, I did not realize that was as dark as it is. <laughs> oh, thank you, baby Jesus for the viewfinder. Yeah, I had some time to figure it out. Le not a lot of time, especially for doing a meet back to back. I never recommend that to my clients, but there was a lot on the line. I'm experienced and I just felt like based on all the changes and how much better I was feeling, it was gonna have a good outcome for me. So I started working with someone I've been friends with for years, super important to me, and just went over all of the things that were important about you know what the goal was, how my sleep's been, how my nutrition's been, but mainly my mindset. And just, you know, a lot of people don't think about it's this case in life in general, but a lot of people think like, oh, well, lifting, the weight's just going to move or it's not. Yes and no, because if you go in feeling defeated and just this isn't going to move, it's probably not. But that day, if the strength is there and your mind isn't, you're probably going to miss. If your strength is there and your mind is there and you feel good, chances increase significantly of you lifting something you've never been able to lift before. So, okay, what are we doing for blush? I have this Dior Rosy Glow Blush, and then I also have, maybe we'll do both, Juvia's Place Liquid Blush. I don't remember if I've used these. Let's just try the powder blush, because this is in Cherry, and I do want a red-ish kind of flush. So pretty. Are you going to show or are you going to make me? Oh, you're not going to make me work too hard for you. There we go. Yeah, so we talked extensively. And the great thing about it was, like, we talked about lifting stuff. But we also just talked about life stuff. And I don't think I really realized how much I was missing just having someone who is is of a similar mindset when it comes to training and passionate about the sport the same way I am, but then still being able to disconnect from that passion and also talk about other things that you love. Like people feel like they can't talk to me about anything but lifting. And you know, after a while, there's only so much squat, bench and deadlift and nutrition I can talk about before it gets old. So just having like it literally felt like everything just came together and long story short went in hit my goal broke the record and at the age of 41 i can now say that i am an all-time record holder for the heaviest deadlift ever done by a woman competing in the raw division at 148 pounds i ain't gonna lie hitting that goal really just ooh, this is the highlighter on this sculpt stick um hitting that goal really just kind of made me feel like i don't know if i want to take a break to have surgery because now i feel stronger than i ever have but i need to minimally get my shoulder fixed and i was like if you're going to be down anyway you might as well do them both so that is where I'm at right now. Life has just been really, really good. Like, I can't stress that enough. Like, I don't think I've ever slept. It's been a long time since I've been able to sleep as well as I have. And I'm saying all this to say, like, people underestimate how much stress can disrupt their lives. I definitely did because I just told myself I'm strong enough. I can deal with it, you know, but at the end of the day, like it starts affecting you physically and sometimes you don't even realize it. So I'm just going to do my brows. I think I'm going to do these off camera. I'm going to do these off camera real quick and then I'm going to come back and finish. We're talking about mental health. All right, so quick little brows. Let's get into this eyeshadow palette. This is the Dominique Cosmetics Essential Palette. And I feel like I remember talking about this and saying I didn't know if I was going to love it or not because I felt like some of the colors were too light and yada, yada, yada. But we have kept it. 
Ooh, she is messy. So the goal today is just a very light, I don't know. <laughs> Y'all know I love eyeshadow, so I always struggle with doing light stuff, but let's just see where we go. So we're going to go in with true shelf, true self, mental health. Yes. I don't think we give stress enough credit is what I really wanted to say because I just thought I was handling things and I mean I was but I wasn't like I was getting through this is not doing anything I mean I see it a little bit but okay compassion I think is even lighter yep so I pretty much just got this for the black and the neutrals, like the light shades and the, which columns? Lord, I can't talk. Shimmers, duh. Yeah, I thought I was handling life, but life was handling me is basically what happened. And now I feel great and I just... I feel like everybody's been telling me like, oh, you're glowing, you look so happy, like just night and day difference that I didn't even realize was showing up that much for me. So all that to say, like, do not underestimate what stress can do to you physically because I literally had started having insomnia, like only sleeping three to four hours a night. And I don't know how I thought I was going to be able to perform at the level I needed to perform not sleeping. I'm just putting my bronzer in my crease to try to deepen this up some. Um, because that's just not even real life. Like anybody will tell you part of recovery when you are in any kind of sport is your sleep. And your food. I was eating because I can force feed myself. I don't have an issue with that. Um, but you can't make your brain shut off to sleep if you're not tired or you have so much stuff going on. So please, if you need therapy, do not think therapy is a bad thing. Talk to a friend, talk to a family member, whatever you need to do. But do not underestimate what stress can do to your body because... I definitely didn't underestimate it, but I guess I just didn't realize until after I was out of it how much of an effect it had on what I was trying to do and made me feel like, realize, you know, like, oh, this is why that wasn't working the way it should have been. So much better place now. I don't know if this is giving what I want it to give at all. And I was trying not to put anything on my lid, maybe a little bit of a cut crease just to keep the lid light. Let me see if I can pack this shade on first. I feel like I tried this palette and I was like, oh no, we can make it work. But I really think I just did the neutrals. I mean the shimmers and was like, yeah, we can make that work. Oh, okay, she's working. That's what I was trying to put on my brow bone. So yeah, that is all I have going on right now. I know it probably sounds like a lot to y'all, but <laughs> story of my life. I'm a busybody. I have a lot of goals. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing next year for hosting powerlifting meets because now not only am I competing, but I'm also putting on events for other people to compete, which I actually have been loving because I get to be part of somebody's story about their first meet or about their, you know, new personal best that they hit at a competition or just, you know, people come and tell me like, oh, you were really nice to me and it made a big difference and, you know, just little stuff like that. And I love being able to give back to the sport. So things are just at a much better place for me and I'm excited for 2024. Y'all comment and let me know, do you do like year end goals? Do you do resolutions? I was talking to some friends about that and you know, it was kind of just like, I don't know if I want to do the whole resolutions thing anymore. I feel like people end up really disappointed when they do those. 
Um, but more or less just have like a good general plan, like a sit so I can have a sense of direction for the year. I don't want this to get too dark. So this is the black that's in the palette and I know I can build it up and do a lot more, but I really just want to have a little bit of definition on the outer eye because I like how that makes things look a little more sculpted. I wish this would have had a better mid-tone shade in this palette, but I know I love the shimmers in it, so may not reach for it a lot, but we'll make it work. I am going to do a pretty dramatic wing because I feel like that just goes with a red lip. You know what? Crap. I didn't use my eye tapes. Uh, let's see if we can just do this. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about next year and I feel like I have a great team of people supporting me and just feel like I can't talk and do this at the same time. I feel like this is the Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. This is like a micro um, tip. And I feel like it almost kind of like dries out and you have to keep like closing it and shaking it. You know what? I don't like this. She's going in the trash. Oh, but I feel like I need to do the other side first. Let me do that before I mess my face up. I just feel like you have to push really hard with this and I don't like it. So I got to find another liner. Let's try this Urban Decay one also a brush there we go yeah that was too much work that's how you mess up I said a pretty big wing but I feel like this is big enough all right I think we're gonna stop there they look a little uneven but we'll make it work so other than that I don't think I have much else going on I keep looking there we go I'm like, I keep looking for this one brush and I can't find it, but it's a brow brush. And oh, there we go, my liner brush. Other than that, I'm just looking forward to next year, getting back on the platform, getting stronger again. And it's funny because people think like, oh, well, once you're over 40, but like every year I've continued to get stronger and I know that there's still room for improvement pretty much just in my everyday life stuff so I feel like all I got to do is just keep doing my workouts because I got that part down but yeah I really just focus on continuing to do better with my training and all of the other stuff outside of the gym because at this level to be able to say I'm one of the best in the world. Like that doesn't happen from just going to the gym and working out. There's a lot of other stuff that goes into that. Um, comment, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, you know, if y'all want to talk about your fitness journey, where you are in it. I'm looking for a mascara. I just, I always love hearing from you guys about stuff like that. Ulta's tubing mascara. Oh, she's wet. Oh, okay. I'm going to need a minute. I do not like tubing mascaras that are super wet. Because I feel like they end up all over your face. Yes, they come off easy. But I also feel like you can make a mess. All right, so while my mascara is driving, I'm going to jump into lips. I want to do like a red lip. Red. But I also kind of feel like this is my Estee Lauder Double Wear Waterproof. This is an eye pencil in Antique Burgundy. Y'all, I've only used this for my lips. Whatever. <laughs> um, anytime I do a red, anytime I do any kind of liner, I just always feel like it looks better to go with a darker shade around the edge and get that ombre versus just a straight red so 
Okay, we got some options for reds. I have a drugstore option, which is this e.l.f. liquid matte lipstick in Red Vixen. We're going to swatch these because I don't think... So here's this one. Very pretty. I think this other one's going to be a little lighter. This is Too Faced liquefied melted matte lipstick in lady balls yeah that's definitely more the red i want then i also have this giorgio armani in shade 415 this is their lip maestro no i think we're gonna go with Too faced i really just want a bright red Oh, yeah, she's red. Oh, that is the perfect red and is making my teeth look so white. Oh, now I wish I had a red gloss because I don't want to put a different shade on top of this. I'm just going to have to do a clear. Oh, this is so sexy. Oh, my God. Who's going to start wearing a red lip more is me because what am I looking for? I need a little bit. Just a little. Okay. I might need to clean this up a little bit so she can be pretty, pretty. Oh my God, this is so good. Okay, I'm going to put lashes on and then I'm going to come back because that's the final look. All right, guys. So this is it for the final look. I feel like such a Barbie. Like, is a red lip going to be my new signature for 2024? Because I feel like I need some gloss though. Like these lips are dry. Let me put some gloss. I don't want to mess up my applicator. Girl. <laughs> and things was thirsty yeah that's better mm, yeah that is much better all right so tell me what you think about this look i just put on my anastasia beverly hills clear gloss tell me what you think about this look should i keep doing this as a signature it might be the hair i don't know these lashes are cute like y'all comment let me know what you think comment let me know some of your struggles this year things you are grateful for what you're looking forward to for next year thank you for sticking with me to the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it i love my little family we are growing looking forward to 2024 with you all that is it for this video and i will see you in my next one bye it's not the way you